Since the last time, the family had already watched three of the vids of the future. Technically, four, but that one was so short, it was barely even a vid at all. The last vid ended with Ejidias and Kato having a genuinely sweet moment, how the boy first thought to share with his brother, before even taking a bite of his treat. To Robot, this action was what wouldn't leave his mind. Something so small, so insignificant, was enough to solidify something in his own mind. He knew why it did, the future was alluding to a much darker, more broken future. A future that put the future of the vids of before to shame. If only they could see more, learn more about the future, maybe then they would have a better understanding on how to stop it. From what he was able to gather from the vids so far, beyond what his son would show, it had to allude to a darker picture. Rationing, even inside the fortress of Hera, from what he was able to gather there were frequent war councils that his son was able to peek in on and illusions of the emperor being gone. Or even worse, if he possibly could be dead. How Aegidius was already being pressured to becoming the new emperor, Robut just knew that everything must be beyond grim if this is what he had gathered so far. We need to watch more, father. Robut spoke up, looking over to the emperor who nodded to himself. Even if these messages are meant for me, the world beyond, the Imperium has more for us to learn from. If you would permit, we could watch more to gain a better understanding of what lies in the far future. I agree, Robot. There are a few parts of this that worry me, especially since your Imperium Secundus is in effect. The Emperor had at first been livid at the idea that Robot had planned for Imperium Secundus, his first thought being his son would usurp his power. But after some thought and consideration, having a backup plan in case the worst happened was a good idea. Not to mention that custodes, father. Horus spoke up from the emperor's right. How they called the boy their liege is worrying, to say the least. I agree with Robut, more can be learned from, he gestured a hand to the pile of vids, as if they were waiting to be played, to show their secrets. Them. I am intrigued. I would like to see the fortifications of Makraj. There was the summoning of a daemon into the heart of the fortress of Hera. Rogel intoned, making Percherabo sigh as he ignored the pre -Dorion. So, we all agree. The emperor looked to the rest of his sons, who all either agreed or would grunt in disinterest. Great. Mugos, please play the vid that is closest to the last. Mugos lame nodded and came to the pile, pulling out the next, pausing. Omnis Saya. A look, and then he brought up a few more vids with his other hand and a few of his mechadendrites. There are more vids now. What? Magnus blinked a few times before looking and quickly counting the vids again before stopping and counting yet again. What? Magnus? The emperor asked, looking between his son and the vid pile. He began to quickly count the pile as well, then came to the same conclusion. What? What the hell is wrong with yet? Lehman asked looking between his father and brother. Mugos Lame spoke up, answering the question that the Omnis Saya and his son would not answer, the both of them squawking more what s there are more vids than before, my lord. There were 136 vids, however there are now 172. What? Lehman looked at the pile, quickly counting as well then throwing his hands into the air as he tried to figure out how 36 more vids came to be. What te fuck dash? No one touched the pile, right? Fulgrim asked, Ferris gained a flat look on his face as he tried to comprehend how this possibly could have happened. Fulgrim tried to figure out how this happened, but other than warp fuckery, there wasn't much reason on how this happened in the first place. I assure you. No one has touched the pile. It's just been sitting there. Magnus spoke up, using his powers to sort through the vids as he counted them again, angry that the number was still the same. They have been sitting there since the chest opened, and we began to watch the vids. And somehow, somehow, there are more vids. The only ones who weren't perplexed by this, happened to be the two who had first found said vids. The twins looked at each other, then to the open chest. Perhaps this chest spoke maybe Alphariuz, as possibly Omegan continued, is a warp anomaly that, then they spoke together, kinda, maybe, we shouldn't even try to understand. You. You want us to not try to understand what the hell happened that 36 new vids just materialized into existence without us noticing. 
Magnus could feel his patience and a bit of his sanity slipping away at the sheer madness of this statement. Yes. The twins grinned, speaking together. Or did they? I uh, just, to be fair, there has been weirder things in my life, slowly spoke Magnus, rubbing his eyes in defeat. From his own throne, Angren spoke up finally, and? I don't fucking care how it happened. It did. Now shut up and let's get this over with. The sooner we start, the sooner we don't have to see any more of the smuff sprat. Gilliman gave an angry glare towards his brother, who reciprocated it with his own uncaring look even as the VID finally began to play. 204.m42, Makraj, Fortress of Hera. The VID opened up into, darkness? Oh, wait, the lens is turned down. The hollow recorder was twisted around, showing Ejidias' blank expression. Surprisingly, there were a few healing scratches upon his face, it was in disarray and dirty with what appeared to be dust, while the part of his uniform that was visible looked slightly torn and dirty. Robot, what happened to him? Sanguinius, I don't know, just wait. Lion, hilarious that you tell him to wait. Sanguinius, what do you mean by that? Conrad, give it time. Suddenly, a white-armored hand, holding a damp gauze came into the frame and lightly brushed one of the scratches. You don't need to do that, weakly protested Aegidius, even as the hand retreated, the gauze slightly red from blood. Just one more scratch to disinfect little lord. Came the rumble of a marine's voice from a helmet's vox caster. The hand reappeared again, holding what appeared to be fresh damp gauze, and brushed another scar before quickly retreating. Aegidius now looked out of frame, presumably at the apothecary who was tending to him. Thank you brother. He said, the light smile appearing to be genuine. Only doing my duty, my liege. Spoke the voice of screen again even as a massive rumble shook wherever they were. Robot, oh, okay, maybe he just fell over again. Lorgar, must have been one hell of a trip if he managed to scuff himself and his uniform up that much. Robot. Everything is fine dash. Conrad, fate has a way of destroying ignorance. All Asteroot's forces within the fortress. All Asteroot's forces within the fortress. Came a voice from a loud Vox speaker. Deploy to the western gate. Deploy to the western gate. Robot, oh come on dash. Conrad, told you. A marine was heard running off screen, presumably the apothecary even as Aegidius sighed an unhappy frown appearing on his face even as his ears sagged. All because of me, he murmured even as he turned the hollow recorder away from him, showing a long, expansive, well-decorated hallway. Lorgar, underground, obviously, but where? Robot, the Hall of the Revered Dead, in the Fortress of Hera, what is he doing there? Rogel, it appears to be well fortified. Thus, he is the for the purposes of his own security. Most likely. Emperor, I am wondering what he means by how it is because of him. Fukin, or why our little nephew is so calm during an attack. The hollow recorder moved even as Aegidius' awkward footsteps were heard, the sound of his boots lightly tapping off of the marble floor soon becoming a constant rhythm next to the occasional explosion which caused a tremor. He walked for a while until he finally stopped at one of the massive alcoves that were periodically scattered across the entire length of the hallway. The hollow recorder was pointed into the alcove, and its occupant revealed. Rogel, dreadnoughts. Gilliman, indeed, the hall is where we give them rest, but this dreadnought. Emperor, it's one of mine. A custodes. Horus, hum, so the dreadnoughts made it too. Emperor, but this one looks familiar. Brother Santodes. Emperor, are you kidding me? He's still alive. Collective shuddering as they remember it. Corvus, at least he's inside of a regular dreadnought and not his, unique one. Emperor, small miracles. A whir was heard, as apparently the dreadnought inside of the alcove was only in a light slumber, despite all of the cabling and tubes being attached. The whir increased into a steady whine as the dreadnought's eye lenses light up, indicating that he had fully awakened. Emperor, wait what? What? Ferris, aren't dreadnoughts only able to be awoken by Dash? Emperor, the custodes and their dreadnoughts only answer and can be woken by me and or an extensive awakening procedure by a tech marine. How in the shit is he able to do it? Lorgar, I. 
I really wish I had an answer to this. Kid can't possibly be Dash. Robot, call my son with any description even remotely related to the Divine, and I will personally throw my throne at you, Lorgar. Lorgar, okay, okay, fine. Emperor, I want some fucking answers. Did somebody call for me? Came the deep, bass-like rumble of the Dreadnought's voice, moments before the head turned and fixed Aegidius with a stare. Ah, little liege, what can I do for you today? Emperor, even he is calling him liege. What in the hell? Lorgar, I thought you said hell didn't exi dash. Emperor, don't push your luck sonny. I am beyond furious right now. There is an, an. The entire hallways shook again even as some dust came flying down. Attack. The dreadnought spoke. Have you awakened me for battle? Noah. I just want some time alone and, and. Did you bring the board? Ferris, did he just awaken a custode's dreadnought to play regicide while an attack is going on? Robot, yes. Yes he did. Aegidius, send him up there don't just waste his time dash. Emperor, one of my golden boys is being used as a glorified nanny for your son, one of my beautiful golden boys in a dreadnought is being used to entertain a child. I don't know if I should be even more livid or fucking laugh. Lorgar, careful or you'll get so angry, you'll enter a homeostasis of anger. Emperor, that doesn't fucking exist Lorgar. Robot, actually, yes, it does. Emperor, you're not helping, Robot. Yet. A very familiar looking board was shown in front of the hollow recorder. I was able to grab it when I had to run here. I only tripped three times on the way. Robot, did he seriously, seriously? Just take down my personal regicide board that was passed down from my father, Conor, from his father, down to the Hall of the Revered Dead. Conrad, yet. Yeah. He did. Can't wait for this payoff. Robot, what payoff? Sanguinius, you'll see. Lorgar, slowly begins to grin. There was a slight rumble from the dreadnought, perhaps laughter? Indeed. Shall we play then? Yet. Yeah. Oh and Dash a hand came in front of the hollow recorder, lifting it higher. I'm going to record it. So I can get better. Good strategy little one. Praised the dreadnought, even as Aegidius quickly padded over, and sat down on the marble floor in front of the giant before opening up the board. Corvus, are we really seeing a dreadnought and a child playing a game of regicide in a crypt while there is a battle going on above them? Lehman, yep. Emperor, correction. We are about to watch a child misuse my golden boy to play a game of regicide in a crypt while what sounds to be a pretty bad and dangerous battle rages on above them in the fortress of Hera. Am I the only one who sees how insane this is? Robot, of course I see how insane this is, father. All of us do. Jagatai, pointing out the obvious isn't really our strong suit. We have Rogal for that. Rogal, I dash. Percherabo, smacks. Rogal, my point is made. Percherabo, what? Rogal, wink. Percherabo, played like a damned piece on a Rigi. I give up. Would you like to be Emperor Little One? Rumbled the dreadnought even as the board powered up, generating random pieces and Aegidius let out a slight whine. I, not really no. One day that very roll might be upon you, you cannot avoid destiny forever. Yet. Yeah. I know, sure I guess. I will be emperor. Emperor, internally screaming. Fantastic. Then I shall begin, world claimer to C3. The piece moved via the voice command, and Aegidius quickly reached out a hand. I move. I move. Guard to C5. The piece moved. You look disturbed little leech, did something other than the attack happen? Aegidius let out a slight groan. No. My leech. There is no need to lie to me. I, well. Earlier. The feed suddenly switched over to the much more familiar view of Aegidius' room. This time, the recorder captured the massive space of the middle part of his room, with the shiny marble flooring, the centerpiece of the tiling of the ultramarine's sigil with an Eldari twist upon it. Aegidius sat on the floor upon some cushions, an empty spot before him, as if waiting to be filled. Robot, wait hold on. Last time, we saw camera splicing, 
but now this is entirely different. As soon as he says this, somehow, the vid changes to the event. Horus, that must mean someone is making these vids, putting them together and is sending them to us. Conrad, like the fucking trans-dimensional chest of vids, being sent through a warp hyperbole and time current didn't make that obvious. Magnus, what did you just say Conrad? Conrad, what? What are you babbling on about? Magnus, obvious confusion. From this perspective, and being so close to an Eldari, the boy's own features really started to come out. From the shape of his eyes, his own cheekbones and even from how long his own body was. But also his human features, from his brow, nose, and even how, chubby he was compared to the elder Ildari. Robot, urge to pinch cheeks increased. Focus young one. You must focus. Egidius was sitting on the floor, his eyes closed and his uniform as immaculate as ever. I am, grunted Egidius even as an Eldar farseer in full armor slowly walked into view. By the god's child, not so much that you tense up. Relax your muscles, let your body sink to the floor then push your mind outwards, the farseer paced through the room, explaining the process, with a hint of annoyance on his face from the action. He imagined that slamming his head into a wall would be much more productive use of his time. Magnus, oh come on! Teaching children about the warp and how to use their powers is a long, tedious process. Anyone who has done that before would understand that. Emperor, so dash. Magnus, you do know I came from a planet that encourages and teaches young psychers all the time, correct? Emperor, you thought I was going to ask you about something else. Magnus, sputters in surprise. Jagatai, to be fair, you have been asking us about that a lot. I'm, trying. Grunted Egidius, his face going redder by the minute. The farseer threw his hands up and shot back, oh. By the relax. You are tensed up. But but. I'm trying my best, he opened his eyes and looked up at the farseer, the child was shivering ever so slightly. No. You were at least in the beginnings of a trance. Now we have to start all over. What? All thirty minutes. Yes. He looked down at the child, a look of resignation painted for all to see. Because you cannot simply escape your mind. Lorgar, is that how it usually goes when doing that type of training? Magnus, not really. If they have been at this for as long as they said, then I can understand some frustration. Getting into a trance-like state should be doable by any young psyker with the right training. But if they've been at this for a year and he still hasn't made much progress. I am I am trying dash. Not enough. But dash. Excuses excuses. I am I am dash a tear came to Egidius eye, he was trying so hard. It was not his fault none of this made sense. His teacher just expected him to know what it meant to meditate, or how to look at his soul, or or anything about the psychic arts. He just wanted to scream. Sound of metal bending. The family turned to Robot, who had bent the armrests of his throne. Robot, I am going to kill every single fucking Eldar I get my hands on. Rogal, then how will you have your son? Perjurabo, smacks. Robot face slowly goes red. Rogal, it was a valid question. Trying. Yes, you have said so for the umpteenth time. But it is not enough, how can you expect yourself to yield the currents of the great sea if you cannot even focus properly? The farseer began to rub at his temples. He never should have agreed to teach this half-breed. Prophet or not? Emperor, again with this whole title and prophet business. I swear. We better get some answers soon, or else Sanguinius will start chewing through his throne. Sanguinius, and no I wouldn't. The visions he has had about the boy didn't make any sense. The boy was supposed to wield power untold, to light the path of redemption and renewal. The visions had told so much about the boy but none of this was working. They had been at this for nearly a year, and the boy could still barely make his way past his own mortal body. Emperor stops and thinks about what this means no. He couldn't. It would make sense, but maybe not. It would make sense. I I dash the distress was now evident on the poor boy's face. He was doing something wrong, he knew he was. None of this made sense, he just kept making mistakes. What was wrong with him? 
why couldn't he just do something right? Robot, snaps hand rest clean off. Damn your monkey father. If only the emissary could have lain with a pure breed. He muttered to himself, knowing that all of these problems just had to be about the boy's parentage. If this was a full Eldar child, he wouldn't be this be this, this, useless. Robot, wait no. Mort Arian, brother, I am sickened and disappointed. Robot, we barely even talked in the future. How is this my fall dash? Sanguinius, can we just watch and talk later? This snapped Aegidius out from his own thoughts, focusing on his teacher. I hey can you, please not talk about dad dash. Unless. The farseer had an idea. What if he were to help Aegidius along? Provoking anger has helped many students before unlock their potential. So what would happen if he were to provoke him? Oh. So your father is who gets you out of your stupor. Magnus, are you kidding me? Emperor, what in the fucking fuck? No. That is a terrible awful idea. Robot, nervousness intensifying. Lorgar, bets on how badly this will backfire. Conrad, 300 on him causing another incident. Robot, you're taking bets on how badly my son will fuck up. Horus, now, now Robot, calm yourself. This is entirely inappropriate of course and they did not say fuck up. They specified incident, that said put me on 400 thrones on him fucking up. Robot, oh you can go to hell Horus. Horus, dickish snickering. Jagatai, put me down for 1000 on the instructor not walking away from this alive. Lorgar, that, that is being very specific brother. Jagatai, call it a hunch. Dad is dash. Useless. If you were a pure breed you would be capable of a simple meditation. That's not dash. But your weakling father had to give in to his cravings. That was a low blow, he knew it. But the anger he feels from the boy, it is causing something to happen. Yes, this had to be the right path. If he were to push a bit harder, perhaps then his power could be unlocked? Robot, wait what I did. Mort Arian, so disgusting. Rogel, brother. Robot, what is it Rogel? Rogel, do you not know the basics of human copulation dash? Percherabo, smacks. Robot, thank you Percherabo. Percherabo, my pleasure. Rogel, always were more efficient at knocking down walls than putting them up. Jagatai, nods approvingly at Rogel. Percherabo, you wa dash. Sanguinius, vampiric screeching. Percherabo, let us watch. Don't dash. Just like your entire race. A failure from start to end. Dad isn't dash. Just like you. A damned failure. I dash. Almost there. He could feel it, like a dam waiting to break. He just needed to push a bit more, then. Then maybe, perhaps the visions would be true. Just like your father and your mother. A damned failure and a waste of my time. Take that back. The edge in Aegidius' voice sounded, different. Emperor, oh no. Robot, what? What is happening to him? Magnus, that voice, it indicates, something different. Robot, different? Different how? Magnus, I. I can't really describe it. Why? Why should I? Yes. This must have been it. Just manifest a bit more, just a bit more than whatever is within this child whatever his potential is, could finally be awakened. Do not insult dad and mom. It gained almost an, etheric voice. Emperor, this all seems so familiar. Oh. Your weak point. Fantastic. Stop now. It almost had a, demonic tang to it. The very air around the child appeared to electrify and tense. Lorgar, I can almost feel it. Magnus, it's warp energy obviously but it's being leaked me redirected from somewhere. Lorgar, it feels, it feels like. Emperor, the Astronomicon. Stunned silence. This excited the teacher, he had never seen a child with this much power and potential. Manifesting something like this at this young yes. The visions were right. He was right. But. What happened at the end? What would happen if he were to push just a bit farther? Or what? You will wail at me like some infant. Stop. The final push just one more, 
he knew it. Show your true potential. Filthy monkey dash. Be gone from my sight. The family are literally knocked backwards by the overtly familiar voice. Egidius' entire body glowed with a blinding golden light, even as a mere instant later, all of that energy was blown outwards, causing an ear-splitting quake as the very air in front of him exploded with energy. The farseer did not even have time to react as he was completely obliterated out of existence, his very soul being reduced to ashes even as the entire fortified wall collapsed like a stack of autumn leaves. Emperor, holy she dash! A door was seen flying past the hollow recorder, even as a glimmer of gold and blue power armor was seen as the golden light concentrated into an incredible force and shoot out directly toward the sky in a torrent of screaming voices. It flew until it hit Macridge's atmospheres, where it split like a stream of water upon hitting rocks. It continued to burn until... Lorgar, are those are those angels? The flying white Neverborn appeared to look the exact opposite of their ancient portrayals however, the wings and clothing appeared to be there, but that is where the similarities truly ended. Their fingers were incredibly sharp claws, their mouths a maw of teeth and their faces the very definition of the word horrific. Soon however, the light changed, turning from burning white to oozing purple and black as a warp rift opened in its place and soon, the angels were fighting demonic neverborn even as an entire legion of the abominations began to be spewed out. Magnus, what in the ever-loving Fu Dash? Emperor, a warp leak caused by an energetic flow into Oh No. The loud wail of an alarm was heard even as a pair of custodes and Captain Sicarius managed to grab onto and drag off Aegidius his aura appearing to calm down as they threw him to the floor. Aegidius! Came the harsh, vox-augmented voice of Cato Sicarius as he quite literally slapped Aegidius out of his trance with his armored hand. The child came to and appeared to realize what was happening. We need to get him to safety. Immediately! Spoke a custodes. Robut stood up fast, knocking his throne down in the process. Robut, do as the damned custodes says. Lehman, you're no you're yelling at a scree dash. Robot, I don't care right now. Agreed. Echoed Sicarius even as the alarms intensified and the entire fortress began to shake and the very sun appeared to simply disappear even as darkness overtook the feed for a second before the lights came on. Robot, how bad is that? Magnus, very. Robot, how bad is very. Emperor, horrible. Robot, internal screaming. Let's go said another even as he picked up Aegidius. My my hollow recorder! cried Aegidius, desperately reaching for the object. Ah damn it! cursed Sicarius, before grabbing it and running out of the room. Outside of it could only be described as chaos. Rubble was everywhere as the entire fortress shook. Space marines and guardsmen were seen running to man their battle stations even as the group of custodes and Sicarius kept running. Where to? Asked one of the custodes. Sicarius caught up and the holocam showed their plight, the stairwell was blocked with rubble. Robot, how how bad is that demonic presence that this level of damage is being done? Emperor, massive. Aegidius managed to open up a warp tier directly into the deepest planes of the warp. The shock waves as well as demonic entities it can summon are almost innumerable. Robot, how does he have this much power? Emperor. Technically Magnus has this much power. But I suspect it was more of a case of rerouting his psychic potential from some w- Robot, well? What? Emperor, I need to think more about this. Robot, what? Emperor, I need to research this more before I can fully answer. Robot, damn it all father dash. Emperor, be patient. I will answer as soon as I can. Now stop acting like Sanguinius being denied more viewing time. Without thinking, the captain smashed a window to his side. The sides are slopped. We will slide down and get his highness to the crypts. It's the nearest and safest place. The custodes carrying Aegidius simple nodded and ran up to the window, even as the roof shook heavily under the power of something. Jump, now! Ordered Sicarius even as the roof came crashing down and the feed went black. Robot, Aegidius. The feed now switched back to the game of regicide between Aegidius and the dreadnought Santodes, they appeared to be on the ending moves. Robot, collapses back onto his fallen throne I, he survived, thank the throne. Lehman, 
you do know that was a flashback, right? That this already happened and the earlier part was him after Tay attack. Robot, shut up Lehman. Lehman, you're no AHM right? Robot, how would you feel if I did that to your child? Lehman, I don't bloody hell have kids so I don't dash. Emperor, quiet boys. And I, raise the banner of triumph. Squawked Aegidius as a flag rose from his lead figure, casting an aura of dread. I, submit. The dreadnought rumbled even as he tipped over his main figure. Wait. You submit. Yes young one, you cornered me and exhausted my force. You win, congratulations. I. I win. I win. Aegidius jumped up, his hands in the air and a full-on grin on his face as he began skipping around the room in joy. Emperor, okay, that is cute. Reminds me of when Horus won his own first game of regicide. Horus, why I did not sing a song and dance around after winning. And, wait, I never won against Dash. Emperor, no, but you were so smug and happy, you practically were. You did it in your mind. Horus, did you just sweep away the fact that you implanted a memory of me winning a game of regicide? Emperor. Perhaps. Horus, I, am not even surprised. Mortarian, how aren't you outraged by that? Or at least angry. Horus, when he raises you, you learn to accept him for all of his little nasty faults. Emperor, looks away. Horus, including how sore of a loser he is at Dash. Emperor, there is an imperial decree in place that forbids you from speaking about that young man. Horus, point proven. I won. I won one one. He said in a sing-song voice even as the dreadnought rumbled with laughter. I won, one one one. Yes you did young one, but beware. I still managed to exhaust over half of your immediate four dash. Aegidius stopped and looked at the dreadnought. But. I never win. He said with a pout. At least I won for once, what's the cost compared to that? Horus, much higher than you could think. Corvus beyond your wildest imaginations and then some. Rogel, he is naive. Percherabo, about to smack, but stops you're not wrong. I'll let that one side, since I agree. Rogel, that is a flawed sense of logic on why you would or would not wound me for speak dash. Percherabo, smacks. The dreadnought rumbled a non-impressed sound. Everything. Your men, your forces are everything. If you do not fight for and with them, then what for? I. I. A rumble racked the hall as dust came flying down from the ceiling. Robot, I still find it beyond odd that he's so calm during this attack. Horus, he must have grown up used to these attacks. They must be a frequent enough occurrence for him in order to accept them as just another part of his life. Robot, that is a, fair point and makes it incredibly worse. How do you know that brother? Horus, gazes towards the emperor personal experience. You must keep in mind Aegidius. These men will give their lives for you. You must not let them do so lightly. I, but. I won, a tiny whine came from the small boy. You tried your best, true enough, but try harder. One can never be too good at the art of war, as horrible and terrifying as it is. I, I understand, Aegidius sighed, hands held behind his back foot kicking back and scuffing at the floor. Good, glad we got that sorted out. Lehman, well, at least the lad can take the advice. Ha, yeah, you always give such good advice brother Santodes. And it is my pleasure to give my counsel when requested, my EMP dash. Aegidius eyes went wide even as a finger flew to his lips. SHHHHH. I thought I said to please not call me Thayot. He whined even as a sad look overcame his face. Emperor, he almost called him his emperor. He almost called him his emperor. He almost called him his emperor. Percherabo, now I see where Rogel gets it from. Of course my liege, though of course we did agree on something. Yeah, what? You telling me exactly what you did to the Farseer. Magnus, nothing major, just true death to Farseer. Totally normal. The color drained from his face, eyes widened and looking away as he tried to not think about the incident. Uh. I a uh dash. 
the distant sound of armored footsteps quickly approached and was heard even as Aegidius ran for the hollow recorder. My liege, the Lord Commander requests your presence. Came the booming voice of Cato Sicarius. The battle is done, but we are still securing multiple unexploded demonic ordnance and oh, Lord Santos, I did not know you were awake. Cato Sicarius' power armored legs were now seen in the shot even as the dreadnought responded. My master awakened me. Emperor, oh now it's just dancing in front of me mockingly. My theory is becoming more and more accurate with every addition. Magnus, are we just going to ignore the text to speech reef dash? Robot, what damned theory? Magnus, that is a yes then. Emperor, just a theory for now. A theory that is looking more and more like reality. Robot, I fucking swear. Ah, yes of course, come along little brother. A hand was seen stretching down to Aegidius height. Do I have to? Yes, it is still dangerous, especially down here now, one of the incursions occurred directly above dash. As if on cue, a massive explosion shook the hallway. Not even a blink later, the dreadnought flew forward the wires and cabling holding it in its alcove snapping as it ran and bent over Aegidius. Wabro dash! A massive chunk of falling masonry suddenly struck the dreadnought on its armored back before splitting into multiple smaller pieces which flew harmlessly to Aegidius' sides. Emperor, stands hold the fuck up! How in the ever-loving fuck? Magnus, what? Emperor, realizes he is standing and clears his throat before sitting back down like nothing happened how did the dreadnought know? Must have just been intuition. Conrad, even I know you're hiding something now. Is everyone all right? Came Cato Sicarius demanding shout as what sounded like multiple marines sounded off off screen. Aegidius now slowly turned and looked up at the dreadnought. I thank you brother Santos. Only doing my duty my leech. The dreadnought rumbled even as it turned back toward the alcove. Although I trust the tech marines will be none too happy. Nor your father. What? Why wouldn't dad be happy? He asked, even as the holocam was picked up and Aegidius slowly walked around Sant Oats. And there, on the ground where they were playing lied the regicide board. It was completely fine. Except for being as thin as a stomped ration bar. Robot, takes a few deep breaths increasing in volume and power Aegidius, claps his hands together, resting them against his lips, as if in prayer, and stares at the screen, I'm grounding you from the past. Aegidius let out a pained groan. That, that was an heirloom, he shuddered, a tiny voice coming out with, I am, so oh, dead. Wait, I feel like I was just grounded, right now. Conrad, oh dear me, messing with the timelines again. Robot, what the hell brother? Conrad, what? Robot, feels like he is slowly losing his marbles. The feed cut even as the blue power armored hand of Cato Sicarius was seen reaching up beyond the lens, most likely to pat the boy's shoulders and give him some much needed comfort. Okay. I feel like we all need a rest after that. And I need to check up on my legion. Quickly spoke Gilliman even as he got up and quickly walked out the door. Yeah, that sounds fair. I should also probably gather the Mornival and Dash started Horus, then his eyes went wide in realization. Wait a second, we're above Olaner. There aren't any Ultramarines here. He just gave us the slip in order to avoid talking about his future, ugh, wife. Spoke Mort Arian. Lion shrugged, are Eldar even capable of understanding human norms? He asked, lounging back in his throne. I just see them as mongrels. Fukin spoke up, uncharacteristic and genuine anger showing up on his face. Robert wasn't there, so he could speak his mind. Speaking of mongrels, spoke up Lorgar. I actually do have some legion business to attend to. About a certain pilgrimage I was very lucky not to take. Lorgar stood and began walking toward the door. You can watch the next VID without me, this might take some time. Do not be too long Lorgar. We will deal with all of the lesser needs at a later date. Lorgar merely gave a wave as he walked out, vengeance and redemption on his mind. Magnus stood up, looking to the Emperor, Father, I believe it would be best for me to leave for a while. Is there anything you wish for me to pass on? A few things, I'll send them to you in a bit. And then Magnus left the viewing room, 
ready to pass on the emperor's word and check on his legion and family. Aight! Spoke up Lehman, also rising from his throne. I'm gonna head out and make sure the nerd doesn't fuck up anything. So be it Lehman. Keep an eye on him but return as soon as you can. We'll do father. Spoke the wolf king even as he strode out of the room. Neeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee